So as we were discussing, just one result from a model doesn't actually tell you a lot of uh, interesting information. And this is especially true since many of these models are stochastic. That means every time we run them, they might get slightly different results. So all that running a model one time tells you is what that particular run generated, right? Um, so by running it multiple times, so you can see a distribution of the results that are possibly generated by that model. Now, there are several different ways to execute multiple runs in that logo or in any of the agent-based modeling platforms out there for the matter, right? Um, in fact, one way to do it is you can just write the, the code to run the model separately yourself, right? So that's what this code does for the spread of disease model, right? It says, repeat 10, set the number of people at 50, run setup, while count turtles with not infected is greater than zero. In other words, while there are still um, some turtles that could still be affected, some agents that could still be infected, run the model and then print ticks, right? Which So this will give you just the number of ticks it takes to get 100% infection for each of the different, um, for each of the different 10 runs that you did. And then you can analyze that result, right? Now, that's well and good, and I'll, I'll show you kind of how to do that in a second. But, you know, the problem with that is that, like, if you go to a different model, you have to write this code again. If you want to change anything, you have to rewrite this code, right? It becomes kind of complex. So another way to do it is something called behavior space. Uh, and behavior space is built into NetLogo. It makes this much easier to do. Uh, and so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, so I'm back in the spread of disease model. And in this case, I've copy and pasted that code that you saw from the slides about the running the model 10 times, right, to get some results to analyze, right? Um, and um, I call it manual batch, just literally copy and paste it right in there. And so we can kind of see how this works. So I'm going to go over to the interface tab. Um, I'm going to hit setup uh, and I am going to type in manual batch to run that 50, 10 times. Now, it's going to take a little while to run, so I'm going to speed it up by just running it. And as you can see from down here, what we get in the end, right, is 10 numbers indicating how many times it took to get to 100% infection 10 different times. So now we can cut and paste this into whatever our favorite statistical analysis toolkit is, whether it be Excel or R or whatever, and we can analyze those results. now. Um, the problem with this approach, right, is that say I want to run it 20 times, well, if I run it 20 times, I have to go in here. Let's say I want to run it for 100 people versus 50 people, I have to go in here and edit this again, right? Let's say I want to do something similar in a very different model, I have to then copy and paste this code to another model. So uh, NetLogo and many other agent-based modeling toolkits provide a tool to kind of automate this process. So you go up to tools and then you go to behavior space and you'll see this um, behavior space window that pops up, right? And this allows you to define what we call an experiment, which is kind of what these are, to allow it to run multiple times. So to create the experiment that I just did, I would just leave everything alone and then uh, I would set the repetitions to 10, right? And I could run it and get these, these 10 um, results. Now, what I output it before was ticks, so I'd have to change this to ticks as well, right? But let's talk through the individual units of what this is. So first of all, you can give the experiment a name just to help you differentiate it. And then what you see next is all the different variables and how you want to vary them throughout the entire course of the experiment. Now, in the original experiment that we were talking about, we didn't vary any variables. We just ran it for 50 times. But let's say we want to look at 100. We can add in 100 as another option, and 150, and then 200, right? And so now, for each of those different values, it's gonna run it 10 times and then record the results, right? So the next thing we have is we have to specify how many times we want it to repeat the results. So it can be 10, it can be 100, whatever, right? Uh, in order to really get the data that we need. And then this is something that's new in NetLogo 6. So in some of the slides where I'm using the NetLogo 5 versions, you'll see this differently. Uh, but there was a button that says run combinations in sequential order. So there's two ways you can think about running all these combinations of these parameters. One way would be to do it, you know, 50, 100, 150, 200, uh, and then go and do another run and do 50, 100, 100, 200, and so forth. And we call that um, the alternating order, right? Because it's running it those multiple times. Now, the sequential order would say run 50 10 times, run 100 10 times, run 150 10 times, run 200. And so it's just a matter of how you want the results 
automatically aggregated for you in the output files, right? So then after that, we have whatever we want to measure. It defaults to count turtles, but you could imagine other things it's measuring. In this case, we're measuring uh, it using ticks because we want to know what that last ticks is. And one of the ways we're going to do that, we can do that as um, the, the next checkbox. This will either measure this output at every step, which isn't very useful to us, or we can just tell it to uncheck it and then just measure it at the end. And finally, you can specify a setup and a go condition, which traditionally are just set up and go, but you can add additional things. You can specify a stop condition and final commands. And then you can specify a time limit. So like, how long should the model run uh, if uh, until it's done, right? Um, and as you notice, we didn't specify our stop command right now, which would be to make sure all the turtles are infected. I'll show you an experiment where we do that in just a second. So we might want to specify that we don't want to run it for more than 200. Of course, that's not very useful because it just means it's going to output 200 every single time for the ticks. But um, let, me show you, let me show you a more detailed experiment where we actually did do fill in all these different things, right? Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to run um, the population density command. Uh, and we're going to look at 50 to 200. So it's going to do 50, 100, 150, 200. Repeat it 10 times, um, and we're not going to measure the runs every step. We're only going to measure the ticks. Now, the stop condition hasn't changed, right? And the time limit's still zero. So why would the model ever stop running? Well, we still have the code in the actual Go code, right, that checks to see if all agents are infected, if they are, that it stops. And that will stop this model as well, right? So let's go ahead and hit OK now at this point, and let's run uh, this model, right? And you have to specify spreadsheet versus table output. I, I like the table output. It's basically whether you want row ordered or column ordered. You have to tell it how many runs to do in parallel. My machine happens to have eight processors, so it's going to default to running eight processors in the background, right? And then once you hit OK, now you have to tell it where to save the data. You can put it on the desktop, for instance, right? Um, and I can hit OK right there. Um, and then it's going to run it right off. In fact, that runs so quickly, I can't even show you the results. So let's flip back to the interface tab real quick, and I'm going to run it again um, so I can show you what's actually happening. And I'm going to replace that, um, the file I just generated. And there, now you can see that it's actually running the model multiple times. Of course, it still happens super fast because, first of all, I have an eight-core machine, so it's, it's running it really quickly on that. But the other thing is, is that, you know, this just isn't a very complex model, so it doesn't take very long to run, right? But if you had a longer model, and one way we can slow our sound is we could tell it's only use one of those eight processors, right? Um, and um, so if you had a longer model or you had a slower machine, you can turn on update view and update plots, and that'll let it run a little bit faster, right? So that's another solution to getting it to run faster. So what does this actually generate? Well, in the end, this generates a CSV file that has the results from all of our runs, which in this case is just going to be the number of ticks at the end of every, when, once everyone is infected, right? And so the next step is to take those results and then analyze them in some interesting way. And so I'm going to show you that in just a second.